Mr. Slav surveyed the noisy and smoke-filled hall crowded with his distant relatives. He wondered if he would be safer pursuing the Cumans across the steppe than staying in that room. At least the Cumans would have the decency to stab him when he was looking. Ostensibly, the crowd had come to congratulate him on his many victories and his marriage to the daughter of the Cuman warlord, Kotian. But Mr. Slav knew that though he was the man of the hour, that fame would come with expectations, very expensive expectations. His uncle, also named Mstislav, came to him, bowing in a way that showed his discomfort of being lesser status than his young nephew, at least for the moment. Grabbing his arm, and with a knowing nod, he reminded his nephew that the treacherous Vesevolod the Red still ruled in Kiev. Of course, the elder continued, a good nephew would use his great fame to restore his generous uncle to power in that city. The younger Mstislav nodded. Then came two sons of Vsevolod the Big Nest, a prince whose power and realm had been large, but not large enough for his eight sons. His ambitious progeny had been causing headaches across all of Rus for many years. Now these two, Yaroslav and Konstantin, came asking for help to depose their own brothers from two northern principalities. Mstislav nodded again. Hours later, as the celebration ended, he glanced over to his wife, sheepishly smiling at the nobleman paying her a bit too much attention. What did this Cuman Khan's daughter know of the politics of the Rus? Her people were simple. In the eastern steppe, the rules were uncomplicated. The strong ruled and the weak perished. And yet, Mr. Slav wondered, why had a steppe people like the Cumans not yet demolished the squabbling and divided Rus? But it was only a momentary thought. Mr. Slav had more pressing matters. He had made many promises tonight. Prince Mstislav, your relative's men are so filled with drink that they are causing a ruckus in the farmlands outside the walls. They must be punished. Daybreak. What a bloody way to end a wedding night. But there is now much to do. Two sons of Vesevolod the Big Nest have asked you to depose their own brothers in Novgorod and Vladimir. Your uncle lays claim to Kiev, and you have unfinished business with your own rival, Prince Danilo of Halic. Prepare the Druzhina, gather grain for the campaign, and raise the banners of war. There are many villages, monasteries, and fortified camps that can be captured by clearing them of enemies. Capturing them will provide resources, relics, military buildings, and other benefits. Они 
Да, господи, а сделай. Дружина are loyal retainers who guard their prince's territory. Armed with shield and axe, they can be trained from towers. Да. Понятно. Capturing villages like this one will help supply your army and grow your manpower. It would be wasteful to destroy lands your ally will soon rule. Instead, target your enemy's castles. If a castle is sufficiently damaged, the principality will surrender. Да, господин. Да. Вашим услугам, понятно? А сделай. Да. Да, понятно. Собираюсь. Понятно. Приказание, понятно? A Bogata is a great hero destined to be sung of in the epic poems of Rus. Find Bogata like this one and use them in battle. The more victories a Bogata achieves, the more his legend will grow. Humans have been arriving from the east, claiming to be fleeing from a great and ruthless enemy. Their warriors pledge to serve you if you give them food to feed their families. The 
humans are thankful and pledge to serve you in battle. The Cumans are asking for food. They say they were forced to leave their livestock behind, so great was the threat from the east. Humans are thankful and pledge to serve you in battle. the humans tell do not seem believable. They claim that a great horde has risen from the far east and has already conquered many distant empires. It may be wise to take some precautions.
делаю. Во имя Господа. Да. Тотчас сделаю. Понятно. Humans are thankful and pledged to serve you in battle. Понятно, да, тот сейчас сделаем, да, понятно. Тот сейчас сделаем, приказание, да, боюсь. Во имя Господне, да, понятно. rules Halepz on the borders with Poland and Hungary. His lands are rich in agriculture and provide pastures for large cavalry armies. Little grain and meat is a small price to pay for the support of human tribes. They will be a powerful army under your command. Danilo of Halic surrenders to you and pledges that he will be a faithful ally. There is no reason to disbelieve the young prince.
Cumans are thankful and pledge to serve you in battle. The Cumans are thankful and pledge to serve you in battle. These Varangians have come from the north to serve in Constantinople. They ask that you show them the way south. They may also fight for you for a time, but their future lies with the Emperor. Warriors from the surrounding countryside muster at camps like this one to defend Rus from marauding nomads. The Cumans are thankful and pledge to serve you in battle. The Cumans are thankful and pledge to serve you in battle. More Cumans arrive, telling of entire armies surrounded and vanquished, and whole tribes sold into slavery. As fierce as the Cumans are, whatever has driven them to flee must be spawned from hell itself. The Teutonic Knights say the swamps beyond are plagued by pagan devils. If you smash the pagan shrines, you will show yourself a friend of the Order. Your people are distressed by the arrival of so many Cumans. They are urging action to be taken against them. Whatever enemy is in the distant east is less threatening than the hordes already at your gates. Attack the Cumans or ignore the demands from your people. 
Attacking will cause you to lose all human allied tribes, but will grow your support from your people. Receive plus 25 population. Since your ancestors discarded their pagan ways, monasteries like this one have been a focus of Rus' life and enrich a prince's lands. The Norse men have taught your infantry how their chieftains fight against men on horse. Делаю. 
Teutonic knights say that you flirt with heresy, but that you also showed devotion by shedding blood against the pagans. They will fight alongside you for the glory of God. Life's father, the Cuman warlord Kotian, has arrived, telling horrific stories of a people called Mongols. He says he pledges himself to you for having been so good to his people in this time of need. Во имя Господь, понятно. Да, тотчас сделаю. Во 
Abaixem esse lugar. Казанья, да, понятно. Novgorod has been a free city since the days of Vladimir the Great. Svatoslav Sevolodovich has the support of the city's militia, giving him superior spearmen and skirmishers. His cavalry is also well suited to fighting armored boyars. You have forced Novgorod's town council to depose Sviatoslav and place his brother Yaroslav in control of the city. Ваш 
Слышь, слышь, Да, да, господин. Бой! Vladimir has always defended the eastern approaches to Rus lands with Kreposts, well-armored infantry, and resilient warriors. Yuri Vsevolodovich will be a challenge to depose from this well-defended frontier. Deposed Yuri Vsevolodovich and placed his brother Konstantin in control of Vladimir. He will be a useful ally on the eastern frontiers. Cumans are thankful and pledged to serve you in battle. The Cumans are thankful and pledged to serve you in battle. Oh, 
has been victim to many conquests and sackings, but remains the capital of Rus in the hearts of all loyal Druzhina. If the Sevalod the Red can be deposed, your uncle will be a powerful ally from this city. Sevalod the Red flees, and your uncle Mstislav has taken control of Kiev. You can now use the city's university. Men from the east arrived in Kiev. They claim to be ambassadors from a great Khan who has conquered Persia and Cumania. They said that if the princes of Rus served their Khan, these lands would be untouched by the Khan's hordes. Your uncle had them executed. Whatever comes from the east, you will not fight alone. Your allies gather their armies. They will meet you at your city. The flow of Cuman refugees from the east has slowed. Perhaps the danger has passed. Ah. 
сделаю. Понятно? А да, сделаю. Господи. Понятно? Да, господи. А сделаю. Приказание. Понятно. Да. Приказание. Делаю. Понятно? Приказание? Да. comes from the east. Calling themselves Mongols, they will fall to the Rus like all the nomadic marauders who came before them. Да, господин. А сделаю. Да, да, понятно. А собираюсь. Да, вот сейчас сделаю. Понятно, да, понятно. господин. and retreats. Pursue and crush them. A great victory awaits you, Mr. Slav the Bold. There are many more Mongols than anyone could have seen. They have sprung a trap. Понятно. 
вас делаю. К вашим услугам. before have returned. They say that Constantinople is held by French crusaders. Nonetheless, they plundered much and send you gold based on their number. Вашим 
заслуга. Я сделаю приказание, да, господин. Атака! Да, да, к вашим услугам, да, господин. Приказание в бой! К вашим услугам, к оружию! Да, а сделай! Атака! Приказание, да, господин. К вашим а сделаю. К оружию! Да, 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 а сделаю. В бой! Приказание, да, а сделаю. Атака! К вашим услугам, в бой! К оружию! Against all odds, you have survived the invasion of the Mongols. Rus has been devastated, but from these ashes a new authority will emerge. Rus cannot be a land of princes. It must be ruled by one man, a Tsar. Prince Mstislav the Bold and the remnants of his army returned from the battle on the Kalka River, weakened and weary. As they passed the Rus cities, the church bells were silent, for all expected the Mongols would be just a day behind, bringing more death and destruction. Miraculously, no invasion came. Prince Mstislav had seen the weakness in the Rus princes, all too divided for the sake of petty squabbles to unite against so great a threat. But the fact that the Mongols did not press their advantage meant that this was a lesson that would die with Mstislav only a few years later. When Mstislav passed from illness, his relatives were not around. They were too busy fighting over his territory. The Rus princes resorted to war among one another, planting the seeds of their own destruction. There would be no second chances. The Mongols would return. <laughs> 